this is Joseph Gallegos with Grape for Green. We're here with Michael Salemi. Salemi is, is one of our great clients. He's um, put in a great, he let us put in a gray water system for his beautiful lawn. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I have a historic house here in Carroll Park, California. Uh, it was built in 1906 and completely restored in 1990. I'm an avid gardener and uh, avid, I guess you call it, environmentalist. Yeah. Uh, I grow organic vegetables and organ organic fruit trees. I met Joseph, he's my neighbor, he's been my neighbor for many years, and he developed a system, uh, a patented system, to put gray water back into the uh, ground. And he asked me if I was interested in installing it in my property. And I said, yes, of course I am. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a risk taker. It was a risk, but I, you know, the ultimate goal was to put the, to go gray water. It was to just reduce my, um, my volume of water that I'm using to water my lawn. I think your lawn, they claim, is what, 70% of your water use? Um, not that high, it's 50%, 50%, but still 50% is a, is, a, is a big number. I'm not big on showing, I'm more big on doing, you know. I show by doing. And a lot of people come by, they see my sign, they say, how is your grass so green? And I just point to my sign. And I say, it's gray water. They're kind of shocked. Yeah. They don't quite understand. So what we have here at Michael's house is a, is a subsurface gray water system. It covers the full main lawn area. How many networks? And it's, um, it has seven zones, I believe. Seven zones. And it's buried a foot underneath the ground. It's spaced every three feet. And what the grass feeds not from the pipe itself, but it feeds from the moisture plume of what we call the aquifer pipe that creates. The gray water is fed by four people who live in the house. Um, typically at least one shower a, a day, sometimes two times a day. Um, you have to do your washer as well, so you have that. But it's And a, we wash clothes for my wife's business. Oh, you do? Yeah, we okay. wash clothes for the uh, uh, facial and nail salon. So all that water gets processed. That's about an extra four loads a week. Gets pushed out to the, to the lawn. The other benefit is I never really worry about my lawn getting watered because it's just getting watered all the time. I don't worry about the sprinkler system and is it on, is it off? And the other benefit that I never realized would be so much, I've had the largest production of plums and peaches and apples uh, since I put in my gray water system. Uh, that I've ever had. I don't have a gray water at garden, but my garden is all drip, always has been drip. But I've noticed this year for the first time, uh, usually when I'm planting my garden, it takes about one and a half feet to get to a moist soil. This year, one foot after one foot, the soil was moist. The only thing I can contribute to would be the whole yard is gray water. When, if you dig any place on this lawn, the soil is all moist. This is where the gray water from the kitchen sink, uh, the left side of the sink comes in. It comes in here, it's a filter box. It filters it and it just gravity fed into this whole area right here. This is all gray water in here. And that's why this peach tree is just done. Now the left side of his sink is only used to rinse off vegetables and rinse yeah. things off. There's it, no, it's just a rinse. There's no garbage disposal. No, no like garbage, that. nothing. I don't believe in garbage disposal, sorry. I'd rather give it to the worms. You know, they like it better. And then it's also fed from the back end too. So it's fed from both sides. So the water comes piped around to the back and comes in that way and it comes in this way. And you can see this. So the idea is to balance it out so it's nice and balanced to this whole yard. So when the water flows, it's, it's being equalized. So if you if you cut away this lawn, you would actually see a virtual water table one foot below this lawn. That's just nice moist zone across it. Moving along. Now we'll go to the basement. Um, and we pull the water from the upstairs showers and the laundry so this is the uh, the second filter we have and this is all the showers and all the laundry water comes in here and it gets pumped out uh, with this pipe here that goes out to the front of the yard to the front of the yard 
and covers all the lawn in the front of the yard. Back here, we actually have a, a three-way valve from the shower. It's coming through the, right through here, and then this is a three-way valve from the shower. But it also is fed from up here, which is the laundry. So they're both coming to this three-way valve. You turn one way, it goes back to the sewer system. You turn it the other way, and it goes into the filter system. And then the filter is just the standard filter we've been describing on the website with a blue air filter to capture the, the hair and the large lint and then it goes into a sump pump and the sump pump pushes it out to the to the yard now the difference between our pumping system and the rules and regulations this is going to the aquifer pipe which is a non-pressurized emitting system so it, it does it's only pushing the water out to the pipe to douse it but it's not using it to spray so it meets all the codes for a simple system and you don't have to worry about cross-connecting into the water the water table. So Michael, why did you decide to go with grass as compared to go with drought tolerant? Well actually drought tolerant doesn't do anything for cleaning the air. And it's actually there's conversation now about how it's detrimental to the air quality because we don't have living green grass you know, reproducing, taking the pollution out of the system and going back. Um, the big challenge you're starting to find out, we don't have enough trees to suck up all the pollution that we're generating. So I think eventually you'll see a trend where people go back to grass and gray water because once they recognize this, once they recognize that drought tolerant is really not going to help the environment. And especially if it's drought tolerant and you're, you're feeding it with portable water. I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me um, because it's taken almost as much to do that as if you just put in a gray water system, you don't have to worry. You could have drought tolerant and gray water, but to me, I don't think you do anything for the environment um, from a you know pollution standpoint like you do with green trees. And what type of grass would you call this? This is a fescue number two. And you keep the height of this grass pretty high yes. for what reasons? Wear and tear. Wear and tear, and to keep the moisture in, to keep that the the, the sun from hitting that the, right because it's, it's like a canopy to protect the soil. Okay. Just an added note here, probably a three hundred percent increase in earthworms in my lawn. I never had before. Wow. California, you hardly ever see earthworms, you know, and it's been like a. I mean, I could probably dig up anywhere in this lawn, and we're going to find earthworms. Michael, let's talk about how you maintain the grass. Um, your gardener is all electric, right? Right. Uh, battery operated. Battery operated, yeah. So th it actually has a negative carbon footprint compared to That's anything right. else because you're not having gas operated systems. The blowers, the trimmers are all electric. Oh, that's great. That's really good. It's one of the things that hopefully we could see from a, a municipality point of view is that you're offsetting this much water, so you should not be charged for the sewer charges because typically when you have a gray water system you're being charged for the water coming in and you're being charged about 90 percent of that same amount of water going out to the sewer system but when you have a gray water system majority of that is going out to, to the landscape and you're still being charged at that sewer charge which sorry I said if I could if I could write the laws I would, I would give you that back that money. I, I think they're gonna have to come around they gotta go back with this rebate program and they gotta go really look at the rebate program and stop giving rebates for natural landscape that you got to use portable water to to grow I mean you're just kind of like defeating the purpose give the rebates more for the conversion to gray water to gray water so all the rebates should be to gray water and then they should give the rebate and if some people want to go gray water through sprinklers they should actually have an additional rebate for certain equipment that they bought to do that so yeah. certain filters that went in yeah the NSF 350 type system just like they did right with battery operated cars Mm -hmm. Same thing. That's how California has been able to achieve, you know, the uh, electric cars because they had all the rebate and the incentives. They got to do the same incentives for equipment that people would buy, you know, for it. Yeah, I, we, I would agree with that. We're, we're blazing a new trail with, with a lot of agencies that we interface with think that we're just an installing company and that we're trying to, to promote just our, our business. But we're, what we're trying to promote is gray water and a DIY gray water system. And that it, we're not so much one to install ourselves, but allow 
individuals to buy it at a Lowe's or a Home Depot and, and be able to install it for a rebate. That's really um, the cost that we figured is per square foot is two dollars and fifty cents a square foot. That's that's lower than most of the rebates out there for three fifty. But if they would just allow that for existing landscapes, that would be perfect. And now now you don't have to change the landscape. You don't have to do anything else. Just install the great water system. My decision was actually driven by the several years of drought we had and everyone you know threatening individual residents of having to cut your water you have to cut your water usage you have to cut your water usage so that there and i always say you know okay well what can i do you know what can my part my role in this whole environmental i guess we're in a kind of a crisis both in drought and pollution and it just made so much sense to put the water back into the back into the yard it just how could you say no doing my part to uh, you know to push back the tide of our environment being destroyed